Perp. So you can see it there in the image right there. IMAP is spinning up. There we up, go. That's is... that four revolutions per minute we were talking about. That is not something that is wrong. That is intentional. And you're looking forward. Any moment now, we could have separation of the IMAP spacecraft. That is a pretty cool image right there. IMAP deploy confirmed. There we go. We have IMAP, IMAP has separated. Beginning its mission to map to the solar frontier and reveal how the sun shapes our space environment. Go IMAP. You spin me right round, baby, right round. <laughs> like a record baby, right round. Yeah, there you go. That's a great view. It is. It's a great view. But the primary reason we do need to spin stabilized, though, too, besides the angular momentum reasons, right, is it gives us, when we're spinning, we get that full 360-degree view of the medium that is trying to study. So very, very important there. Now, the second stage has already arrested that spin or stopped the spin. Correct. Because the other two spacecraft do not need to be spinning. Uh, but IMAP is on its way with that ever-important spin. Now we've got another couple of uh, big milestones happening. We should get acquisition of signal. We have a live camera at the location where we expect to see uh, a big celebration. This will be the IMAP Mission Operations Center at Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory. Their team there is looking now for the acquisition of signal, and there they are. We heard earlier that they had a lock on signal for the second stage in Hawaii, so their expectation is that we should get that AOS pretty quickly. You're looking at a view at the remaining spacecraft on the stack, which is the SWIFO L1 and Carruthers. IMAP is currently running an autonomous sequence, so it's spring-loaded. As soon as it came off the Correct. the spacecraft, it, it started running an operation. Correct, yeah. So they have all these commands already preloaded pre in there. And so they're going through now probably their health checks, auto autonomous health checks, and also trying to dial or phone home in, in ET parlance. So we're still just waiting for the acquisition of signal, which is very, very important because we don't have a spacecraft, unfortunately, if we don't have, a, if we don't have acquisition of signal. See them in the corner working hard there. At the bottom of the screen, there's Kim Ord. She's the spacecraft operations manager. Yep, we just received word that they did receive acquisition of signal. So go IMAP. That's that's excellent news. And that came fast because they had that lock on Hawaii. They also have two ground stations from the Deep Space Network in California. So they locked in. Acquisition of signal, that tells them that IMAP so far is there right where they expect it. Exactly. They knew where to look in the sky, and they were primed and ready to actually talk to the spacecraft when it was ready. So kudos to them. I love physics. I love when things work the way they're <laughs> supposed to work. This is great and stuff. And it's a beautiful thing to watch it live as well. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing to watch it as well. Agreed. Agreed. So our next major milestone would be the separation of SWIFO L1, which is still on the stack. That's scheduled for plus one hour and 30 minutes. We did have an on-time liftoff this morning, 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time, Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. During that flight, we achieved successful stage separation and re-landing of the first stage booster, completed two burns on the second stage to get to this point. And we've deployed the first of three payloads. That's IMAP has already been successfully deployed. SWIFO L1 and Carruthers will follow. Now for the Carruthers payload, this is equipped with a geocoronal imager, and this will be able to detect fundamental characteristics of the outermost layer of Earth's atmosphere. We're listening in for the deployment of SWIFO L1. There we go. SWIFO L1 deploy confirmed. Beautiful separation and successful deployment of the SWIFO L1 payload.
We're not done yet. We do have one more payload coming up. That's NASA's Carruthers Geocorona Observatory. We already received that acquisition of signal from the IMAP payload. And SWIFT OL-1 is significant. We are at an altitude of roughly 5,000 kilometers. Correct. And if you recall, we were looking at the altimeter there on the bottom right screen. We kind of de we deploy SWIFT OL-1 about 3,800 kilometers. And so as we're on that escape trajectory that I was mentioning earlier, we are seeing our altitude steadily increase as we move to the Carruthers uh, spacecraft also being deployed. Carruthers, separation confirmed. Awesome. There we go. That is cool. Carruthers separating, beginning its mission to capture the faint ultraviolet glow of Earth's outer atmosphere. All three released. Yeah, congratulations to all three teams. I know this is a big day for all of them. And also congratulations to the LSP team and the SpaceX teams who worked tirelessly to get these missions off the ground. So kudos to all of them. And the team for Carruthers now are going to be very anxious as they look for their acquisition of signal. You know, because the spacecraft has to turn on and, and run a number of a number of items, but I believe based on the reaction they may, they in may the have. room, they may have gotten it pretty quick. They may Let's have. listen and see if we get an update to the NLM, the NASA launch manager. Unofficially it looks like they may have got AOS, but officially we have not heard it yet on our nets. So we may have been seeing the reaction for the spacecraft separation and Correct. just uh, general excitement about making it to this point, which is a big deal. It's a very big deal, very big deal. Yeah, this mission was a mission where we had three, three, three payloads, and it almost was trying to be almost like it was three primaries. So I just want to give, once again, kudos to the team to getting this done. The team looked over almost 500 different requirement verifications they had to get this mission <laughs> off. So just think about that. 500 different wow. requirements you got to verify. That's so, a lot. so yeah, big deal. Yes, with OL1, has telemetry at the mock. Excellent news. Congratulations. We just heard confirmation from NASA launch manager Denton Gibson was given confirmation that uh, acquisition of signal has happened for SWIFT OL-1. Yep, congratulations to SWIFT OL-1. Big accomplishment there. So it looks like uh, everything was put into a good orbit. A great job by the second stage of the Falcon, Amanda.